I had to keep a close eye on Rizzo to find out where the guns were. Hence why I saw him having Sunday dinner with his family, driving into the city to go to Madame Sterling's, meeting with our mutual friend, and now being parked outside this little townhouse, presumably to fill my large order of Russian firearms. So, like I said, I felt for the guy in the car, because I know what it's like to worry about somebody not delivering what you need. Rizzo was in the house for quite a while, and our thuggish friend waited patiently in the car. About 20 minutes had gone by, and I was starting to wonder what was taking so long. Just then, I heard the front door open, and Rizzo emerged from it with a bag. A big bag. He walked over to the trunk of the car and put the bag inside. Then he went back into the house and came out with another big bag. And then another. And another. That was my whole order sitting in the trunk of his car. The two drove off and went to the man's apartment in Columbus Park. Rizzo and the guy brought all the guns into his place and then went their separate ways. I followed Rizzo all the way to Highland Parkway and stopped tailing him when it was clear he was going home to the suburbs. I then drove to the townhouse where he had the guns and decided to take a look for myself. When I pulled up to the townhouse, all the lights were off and it was clear no one was home. I walked up to the front door and began picking the lock and then drew my new Makarov before entering. Inside it was dark and it didn't seem like anyone was there. I took out my small flashlight and started looking around, trying to think where in this tiny townhouse Rizzo could have stashed all the guns. They were nowhere in sight. The only place they could be was in the basement. I searched for a door leading downstairs, but just then, I heard footsteps. I wasn't alone. The footsteps made their way toward the staircase. And down the stairs. You idiot, I thought to myself. How could I expect a stash of guns this big to be unguarded? I upped my pistol in anticipation of whoever was making their way down the stairs. I was hoping I wouldn't have to use it coming in here. But now it looked like I didn't have much of an option. When I heard the footsteps get to the bottom of the staircase, the lights flicked on. I jumped back in shock, and so did the other man. My initial shock came from being found out, but was turned into confusion when I saw the other guy. He wasn't what I was expecting at all. Long baggy pajamas draped over his frail and shriveled up body. Big bushy eyebrows sat quivering on his wrinkly forehead as fear set into his old leathery face. This man wasn't a mobbed up stash house guard at all. He was just a scared old man who walked downstairs into his own living room to find a gun pointed at him. Please, don't shoot, he said. I had no intention of harming the helpless old man. But I couldn't put my gun down. I was frozen in place by shock and confusion. I thought I might have entered the wrong house. But a picture of Rizzo and his wife on the wall put that theory to rest. I then looked at the top of the staircase to find a younger woman clutching tight to a little girl. Terror had gripped them both, and rightfully so, at the sight of an armed stranger standing in their living room. I'm sorry, I said quietly, and lowered the gun. I walked out the front door and quickly to my car before anyone else could see me. I drove straight home and made sure no one was following me. In my apartment, I poured myself a tall glass of whiskey and threw it back. What the hell did I just walk into? All night I sat by the window watching everything that went by. I was paranoid. 
fearful that Rizzo or one of those Italian goons was going to bust through my door at any minute and demand answers for my late night visit. The house clearly belonged to Rizzo, so who were those other people sleeping in it? I didn't get a wink of rest all night. I was too on edge about the stir I had caused and what the hell was going to happen to me if Rizzo found out. But beyond that, I had to know more. My relentless curiosity forced me to dive deeper. After the sun came up, I went straight to the county clerk's office and looked up the address of that townhouse. It was registered to a Giovanni Rossi, the last remaining grandparent of Pauli Rizzo. The death certificates of the other three grandparents were there as well all of them immigrating from Italy within the last 30 years, and all with the surname Rossi. It seemed that his grandparents were from the friuli venezia Giulia region of northern Italy, a farming province which bordered Slovenia. The longer I looked at the death certificates, the more Rizzo's situation started to make sense. Most of the recognized mob families originated from southern Italy. Practically none were farmers from the north, Pauli Rizzo's father was the first to immigrate to the U.S. And when he did, changed his name from Rossi to Rizzo. A surname more commonly found in southern Italy. Maybe he didn't want them to seem like poor farmers or something. But either way, it appeared as if he was trying to hide something. More information on the address listed residence Maria and Anna Rizzo at the townhouse. The woman and child I saw at the top of the stairs. The two had immigrated to the States earlier in the year, and I wouldn't be surprised if their surname was Rossi before coming here too. Their immigration papers listed Maria as Rizzo's cousin, and Anna as his niece. I was never a big fan of the guy, but I began to sympathize with him and realize why he was so hell-bent on making paper. He had a lot of people relying on him, and he couldn't afford not to be a big earner. Although he was a scumbag on the streets, he was the champion of his family, and a hero in the eyes of them. A closer look at his grandmother's death certificate gave even more interesting information. It listed her birthplace as Sazana, Slovenia. Suddenly it all made sense. Everything about him, and everything that he was doing. Rizzo presented himself like such an established mobster, because he wasn't one, and portrayed himself like a quintessential Italian-American wise guy because he wasn't one of those either. Sure, he had Italian heritage, but he wasn't of pure Italian blood. He was a quarter Slovenian, and that simply would not fly in the mafia. That's why he was doing all this work for Carlo Imperioli, sucking up and trying to prove himself as a valuable asset. I didn't know what Rizzo was thinking, that maybe he could suppress this information and become a made man, without the others finding out. Whatever his plans were, this piece of paper could be his downfall. So I discreetly cut it out of the binder and put it in my pocket. I left the county clerk's office and went straight to the Golden Mule. I walked in and approached Ivan as he stood behind the bar. Ivan, take this, I said. If I get killed, This envelope needs to go straight to Carlo Imperioli. What is it? Just something to ruin the man who kills me. Ivan smirked. (laughs) Glad to see you are working hard, Ace. I didn't spend any time explaining myself to Ivan at the mule. I figured the Russians wouldn't know what to make of an old woman's death certificate if they decided to take a look at it. But giving it to Carlo and the Imperiolis was my insurance against Rizzo. I arrived home and went straight to the medicine cabinet. I threw back a few pills and then the phone rang. 
just before I picked it up, I realized who it was. Shit, I thought. It's that thug from Columbus Park with my guns. I completely forgot I was supposed to meet him today. I took my hand off the phone and let it ring. I didn't know what I was going to do about him. I didn't even have the money to buy the guns. It didn't matter. He wasn't important anymore. Rizzo was who I needed to focus on. It was clear a confrontation with him was inevitable. The big question was how I would play it. I sat at my desk, drinking, smoking, and thinking about what I would say to Rizzo if he was here right now. His grandmother's death certificate was my ace in the hole, but I didn't want to reveal it until a plan was set in place. You see, I could simply just extort Rizzo and force him to hand over the guns, or tell the Russians about him and get the guns back by force. But I didn't want to do that. He had too many people who depended on him. Innocent people. Who didn't choose this situation. Or deserve violence. I owed him an exit strategy. An arrangement that would appease everyone. Something to get the Russians their guns back. And allow Rizzo to earn without ruining his reputation with the mob. But what? As I sat and thought... The tiredness kicked in. Exhaustion entered my mind and body. I began to drift off. Deeper. And deeper into the realm of unconsciousness. Look at me, not him, you piece of shit. Yeah, I knew I seen you before, back when you was a cop. Small world. Don't get cute with me, you fuck. Why the hell did you break into my grandfather's house? The guns. I was looking for the Russian guns. Oh, what, the ones you helped steal and then sold to us? That was before, when I was on the force. I'm working for the Russians now. Wow, unbelievable. As if there weren't enough two-timing scumbags in this city. <clears throat> they mean business, you know. They'll kill you. I already told them you have the guns, but I said I'd be the one to get them back. That was a bluff, but I could tell they believed me by the way they looked at each other. Well, you can tell your comrades to go looking somewhere else for those guns, because I'm not giving them up. If we can work out a deal, they don't have to get involved. For the sake of your family, please, come to an agreement with me. And why shouldn't I shoot you right here and now? Because if you do, they will come looking for you. Your wife, your kid, your grandfather, your cousin, and your niece. Concern and dismay settled into Rizzo's expression. As he slowly lowered the gun, he then gave a look to his enforcer. Stay the fuck away from my family and forget about those guns, you prick. I lay there on the cold hardwood floor, wondering how I had been caught so off guard. The pain in my stomach wasn't as bad as the sensation in my chest. What kind of junky investigator gets caught sleeping at their desk by the one guy they've been hired to investigate? The feeling was just downright embarrassing. It was only after the pain wore off and I got back up on my feet when I realized the bright side of the situation. If Rizzo wanted me dead, I'd still be on my apartment floor, bleeding out with a bullet hole in my head. But I wasn't. So that meant he bought my story about the Russians knowing his situation. The fact I was still alive also meant that he wasn't backed by the Italians either. If he was, Rizzo could easily take on the Russians. But the fact he didn't want trouble showed he was still independent. The only problem was his stance on the guns. 
he seemed pretty hardline about not giving them back. He was playing with fire as an independent dealer. By stepping on the toes of a larger crime group and not wanting to cut some type of deal. I wasn't quite sure what his endgame was. But at this rate, he was going to get himself and others killed. I had to make an arrangement that would satisfy everyone. And fast. I didn't know how much longer the Russians could wait before demanding results. Rizzo needed money, and the Russians wanted their guns back. Neither side would give up anything they felt was theirs. And someone was going to have to make up the difference. But who? Clearly getting made was more important to Rizzo than the money. He had to earn for the higher-ups to see his value. And selling these guns was his ticket into the big boys club. But he didn't necessarily have to sell them in order to make money. He could still get made by bringing in enough cash. And also by making sure the Imperioles didn't find out about his Slovenian grandmother. I was the only thing standing between Rizzo and getting made. He would have to play ball with me no matter what offer I gave him. But I was going to give him a good one. I thought long and hard about all the people making money illegally in Hayden. Surely someone could pay the difference for Rizzo's guns. Someone so rich that Rizzo's loss wouldn't even put a dent in their pockets. That someone was somewhere in this big dirty city. I'd bet money on it. Bingo. It was so obvious. How did I not think of it before? A solution that would get the Russians their guns, get Rizzo made, and keep his secret under wraps. I called our mutual friend. The goon I blew off about the big order of guns. I knew he would be pissed to hear my voice. But I had to ask him a favor. I told him I'd buy the guns if he could get me a meeting with Rizzo. A meeting in a safe place. Just to talk. He seemed reluctant at first. But then said he could make it happen. I was set to meet Rizzo at the cafe in Columbus Park the next day. I wasn't sure how he would take my proposal. But he would have to take it. There was no other choice. I arrived at noon and walked through the front door. The cafe was empty with only Rizzo sitting at a table in the back. Right as I walked in, he nodded at the man behind the counter. The fat old man took off his grease-stained apron and walked past me toward the front door. He flipped the sign to closed, put on his hat, and took a walk. I walked across the dining room floor and took a seat opposite Rizzo. I thought I told you to forget about those guns, you two-timing piece of shit. Forgetting about my job isn't an option. That's why I have an offer for you. Well, unless you want to buy them all, I'm not interested. Face it, Rizzo. You can't go to war with the Russians by yourself. And if you don't cut a deal with me, this won't end well for you and your family. Once I move these guns and get made by the Emperoles, none of it's going to matter. The Russians won't be able to touch me, and then I'm going to squash you and everyone you know. What makes you think the Imperioles would ever make a guy like you? Because I know how to hustle, how to earn, how to deal with punks like you. Punks who got nothing and leech off of everyone else. Last I heard, you have to be 100% Italian to get made. I'm sure Carlo and the rest of his family would be thrilled to find out you have a Slovenian grandmother, Rizzo. Or should I say Rossi? Rizzo's glare hardened, and scorn filled his eyes. In that moment, I could tell he wanted nothing more than to pull out his pistol and empty the clip into my head. But he knew better than to kill the only person keeping his secret unknown. I have her death certificate, and if you cooperate with me, no one else has to see it. You fucking piece of shit. You would never. I don't want to. I want to help you. How's a scumbag like you going to help me? There's a small underground casino in Chinatown that's flown under the radar the past couple years. They make a lot of money, 
and for some reason the cops don't know about it yet. I can give you the information and put you in contact with a cop who will break you off a cut of the extortion. Psh, no way. I don't work for the police. It's your only option, Rizzo. You can't afford to do anything else. This way, you can still get money for the guns, still get made, and make a friend on the force. You think other made guys don't have friends in Hayden PD? You're crazy. Don't just do it to save yourself. Do it for your family. They need you. You're a real piece of shit, you know that? I slid a piece of paper across the table to Rizzo. On the paper was the casino's information, my old partner Pat's phone number, and the address of the Golden Mule. Make the call. Deliver the guns. And get the money. Your secret's safe with me, I said, as I got up and left. Rizzo's lip trembled with rage as he watched me walk away. He had anger in his heart, but he wasn't a stupid man. He knew what he had to do. The guns got delivered to the mule later that week, and I heard through the grapevine that Pat paid a visit to the Chinese casino. I know Rizzo got paid, because I didn't hear a word from him since our little meeting. Plus, the casino in Chinatown is still running. I went and bought the rest of the guns from my thug buddy in Columbus Park. And to this day, I still don't know his name. I had no real need for that much firepower. So I gave everything to Johnny for his help. His eyes lit up like the 4th of July when I popped the trunk and said they were for him. For a brief moment, everyone was happy. The Russians got what they wanted, Rizzo was well on his way to getting made, and not to mention Christmas came about nine months early for Johnny. I could sleep well knowing I was on the Russians' good side, and that no one wanted to kill me for any reason. I just wondered how long it could last. Sunshine and rainbows never had much of a home here, and calm moments never overstayed their welcome. But for now, I just have to enjoy it. You never know what tomorrow will bring in Hayden City. <laughs>